Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is all-knowing, all-seeing, and all-powerful, and is 100% trustable and faithful to his word. Um, I wanted to share the study with you about the fact, you know, the facts, the truth, that we are able to walk untouched in the Great Tribulation. There are amazing promises to the saints of God that we can walk through it all. There are stipulations, um, you know, and then there is the fact too, you know, we can never forget, um, you know, like it, when it talks in the book of Revelation about the martyrs, you know, who were beheaded, um, and they say, Lord, how long, you know, till you avenge us? And the Lord tells them, wait a little bit longer until the rest of your brethren and fellow servants that should be killed as you were is fulfilled. Now, on that note, you know, we, we should walk as, uh, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They said, you know, we're not going to bow down and worship the image. Our God will deliver us. You know, that's to be our proclamation. That's to be our, our heart's faith. But then on the other hand, we have to be willing, you know, and, and say, but even if he doesn't deliver us, you know, we're not going to bow down and worship this image. Because everything, there's nothing new under the sun. You know, every single thing that the saints of old went through, it's like the, the great tribulation at the end of days, it is the same thing. Only, like the word says, it will be the worst tribulation that ever was or ever will be. But the point of this, I really, really, my the burden of my heart, you know, for the church, that they would understand and know these things because, because of that ridiculous, stupid, and evil pre-tribulation rapture teaching, you know, most people don't even have a clue. They don't, they just don't have a clue. And, and I just have such a burden for these people because I know the word says that, you know, many when tribulation and persecution arise because of the word, for his name's sake, they, they fall away. And I just know there's going to be people because they're not prepared. You know, they haven't been obedient to the word of God. But anyways, I just really, I wanted to share these you know, with uh, you believers out there, because we need to have, you know, faith based on the truth, and it's just a wonderful promises God's given us, so I'd like to share those with you, some of them, um, and in knowing the promises, let us look uh, first here at these judgments that are coming, Revelation 6, 7 through 8 says, when you'd open the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see, and I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death. And hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over a fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. Um, these things that right here, these are the four sword judgments that God sends on a land to pretty much reward sin, rebellion, you know, towards him. So anyway, I want to show you here. In uh, Ezekiel 14, that's where you can find that information. It says, if the Lord stretches forth his hand to send his four sword judgments, famine, beast, sword, or pestilence. Now, when you go back here, you have famine, sword, beast, and this relates to pestilence. So these are God's four sword judgments. It is judgment coming on the earth, okay? Um, in Proverbs 10, 2, it says, Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivers from death. Okay, that rider is death. It is Satan. It says, Hell followed after him. It is Satan and his, you know, cohorts that followed him in rebellion. Because, you know, one third, of the, one third of the stars, it says, fell. Anyways, but the treasures of wickedness profit nothing. Like it says in the word, they will cast their silver and their gold in the streets. It will not be able to deliver them. Okay, but righteousness delivers from death. And then when you're looking at these four sword judgments that the Lord sends into a land, okay, in Ezekiel 14, he says in verse uh, 14, uh, though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. And then verse 20, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. So when you're looking at these four sore judgments, okay, 
that death brings, okay? Righteousness delivers. It is righteousness that delivers. And these guys, you know, Noah, Daniel, and Job, I, I pulled out of the word what it said about them because in what it says about them, these are the things we need to have that we might obtain deliverance. Um, it says, Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. Therefore, he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Okay, Daniel was faithful. Neither was there any error or fault found in him. Therefore, God gave him favor. And Job, he was perfect and upright, one that feared God and eschewed evil. God made a hedge about him, his house, and all he had on every side. And when you look at these people, it's like Daniel, he dealt with the beasts of the earth. Okay, he, he went into the lion's den and God shut their mouths. He found favor. Um, he was delivered from death. And like Noah, you no, know, God sent the judgment of the flood upon wicked men. Okay, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord and he was saved from that judgment. Um, Job, you know, this, this hedge that he had about him, he had God's protection because of the way he lived his life. Um, and in testing, you know, by the enemy, he came forth. You know, and, and was rewarded seven sevenfold what he had before. So, you know, when you look at these men, righteousness pays off, okay? And so we want to, you know, walk the way they walked. Um, but anyway, so let's continue on here. So, um, the word tells us also, Romans 2, 9 through 11, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that does evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. But here, right here's a promise, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that works good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, for there's no respect of persons with God, okay? His word, he does not break his word. He does things according to his word. Second Peter 2 Peter 2.9, the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. So if you look at that time when death and the hell follows after and all those four sword judgments hit this earth, okay, the Lord knows how to reserve the wicked, the unjust, the sinners to that day of judgment, okay? And it is a time of temptation because there's a scripture that says he will keep you from that time of temptation that's coming on all the earth to test every inhabitant, okay? So he knows how to deliver the godly out of that temptation, all temptations, Okay, and then, this is a great blessing here, uh, Psalm 94, 12 through 13, blessed is the man whom you chasten, O Lord, and teach him out of your law, that you may give him rest, rest, from the days of adversity, until the pit be digged for the wicked, and there's going to be the greatest days of adversity, okay, but God can give you rest, like it says up here, peace, glory, honor, and peace, you know, to every man that works good. Okay, the greatest promise in the word to me, um, and I don't, you know, it, there may be a different one that's the greatest promise to you, but concerning tribulation, you know, the greatest promise to the tribulation saints, those who walk in that day, I find it to be here in Revelations 3, 8 through 10, and he says to the church of Philadelphia, I know your works, behold, I have set before you an open door and no man can shut it for you have a little strength and have kept my word and have not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you because you've kept the word of my patience. I also will keep you from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And that time of temptation that comes on all the world is when you must receive the mark of the beast to be able to buy and sell. You have to bow down and you have to, you know, make that choice right then and there. Every man will, will be tested in that time and you will choose that day who you will serve if you haven't already. But see, that's the key here. We want to choose now. We want to be walking with the Lord now. These people in Philadelphia, everybody knows Philadelphia means brotherly love. And we know love is God's commandment. It is the greatest. It is the greatest thing.
Okay, and you can do all kinds of things. If you don't have love, it's all pointless. Love is our high calling. It is Christ being perfected in us. God is love. We want him, the fullness of God in us, that being love. Okay, when he says, I know your works. Okay, these guys, they had no bad works. They were all good works. Um, they kept his word. They didn't deny his name. And it is for that very thing that they kept his word because, he says, because you've kept the word of my patience. You know, and that the word of his patience, keeping his word, continuing in patience in his word, no matter what comes. Okay, because you do this, I will keep you from that hour of temptation. So we have these beautiful things here. You know, I sat before you an open door. I've loved you. I will keep you. These, this is just to me is just the greatest promise. But on the note, you know, of these people here in Philadelphia, I wanted to share some more scriptures that shed even more light, you know, on, on these, uh, this church of Philadelphia here, this promise, um, it says in Proverbs eight seventeen, I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. So, you know, when he says, I have loved you, we know they loved him. They really loved the Lord. Then in Psalm 145, 20, the Lord preserves all them that love him. So again, we know they truly love the Lord. But all the wicked he will destroy. Then in Psalm 31, 23, Oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserves the faithful and plentifully rewards the proud doer. Do you see this here? This is like a command. Love the Lord. Why? Because he preserves those who love him. You know, they're, they're the faithful, the ones who love him. You know, the proud doer, not ashamed of his name. And these things, you know, they, like when it says the faithful here, that reminds me of uh, Daniel. It says he was faithful. And then here in uh, Psalm ninety-seven, ten, you that love the Lord hate evil. He preserves the souls of his saints. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. And this speaks to me of Job. You know, he has shewed evil. And then uh, Psalm 37, 27 through 28, depart from evil, do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loves judgment, and he forsakes not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. I like this scripture here because, you know, when it says the Lord loves judgment, it's like perfect judgment is his word, and he loves his word. He's faithful to his word, and he upholds it. So we can trust that if we do the stipulations he has for preservation, he will preserve us. Okay, he will never forsake his saints ever. He does not forsake the righteous. They're never forsaken. His seed is never forsaken, nor are they ever seen begging bread. Okay, it is possible to walk through what is coming. First Thessalonians five twenty three through twenty four says the very God of peace sanctify or purify you wholly, completely, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body. Be preserved, blameless or faultless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calls you who also will do it. God is faithful to his word. He must be faithful to his word because he cannot lie. So, you know, let us be sanctified wholly, completely. Let Christ be formed in us. You know, let us stand on these awesome promises and we really can walk through this thing. You know, the only thing that can you know, stop you from being, remaining and being alive to his coming is if it's his perfect will that you are to be a martyr. And if that's the case, it doesn't matter because we're still preserved for all eternity. We have life. Um, but there is also some scriptures concerning deliverance from the man of sin and the harlot and, uh, a sister, my sister Lucinda, she shared this chapter with me. I don't know how long it's been now, but at least a week ago. But it is the very thing that provoked this study because as she was reading it to me, it was just like, oh my gosh, this is the way to preservation through what is coming, you know, right up to the, the man of sin and the harlot, you know. But anyways, I'm just like, uh, just the, the word is just amazing how it all goes together. But I want to actually read this whole chapter here. Um, because everything you see in blue, those are the things that you and I need to do you know, to be actually one of the righteous to be delivered. So let's read through this. My son, if you will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, 
so that you incline your ear into wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yeah, if you cry after knowledge, you lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as, as for hid treasures, then shall you understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. He's a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keeps the paths of judgment. And that right there is the the workings of his word. Okay? He does not fail his word. And he preserves the way of his saints. Then shall you understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yeah, every good path. When wisdom enters into your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion shall preserve thee and understanding shall keep thee. Now this is where we got to kind of spiritually discern here. To deliver you from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaks froward things, who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the frowardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked, and they froward in their paths. That also means crooked or perverse. This man, this evil man that speaks froward things. Think about the man of sin, you know, the beast, and he speaks blasphemies. He speaks lies. He speaks evil. Okay, and then it goes on to say, to deliver thee from the strange woman. Even from the stranger which flatters with her words, which forsakes the guide of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. This totally speaks to me of like in the book of Daniel when it says, you know, he, though he, he has intelligence with those who forsake the holy covenant. And, um, that's, that's the, these people, this harlot, okay? She forgets the covenant of her God. She forsakes the guide of her youth. These people forsake the Lord. They turn from the Lord. And that that is the harlot, okay? Um, for her house inclines unto death. Now remember the rider death bringing his four sore judgments. Okay, the house, the, the harlot's house. Okay, you could look at it like we have a, a true body of Christ. You know, like in all the parables, you have vessels of honor and you have vessels of dishonor. Well, these vessels of dishonor, these foolish virgins, okay, their house, okay, it inclines unto death. Those four sore judgments, you know, it ends up, you know, being with Satan, worshiping the beast and, and the serpent, okay, her paths unto the dead, okay, they lose life, they forsake life. None that go unto her return again, so don't go unto her. Neither take they hold of the paths of life. Okay, so this is like if you, like the word says, it had better been better for them not to have known, you know, the, the holy commandment. It had been better for them not to have tasted of the heavenly gift. Those people, okay, they turn away. They don't come back. Okay, so we, we do these good things here that we may walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of righteousness. For the upright shall dwell in the land and the perfect shall remain in it. And again, I'm seeing Job, Daniel, and Noah. Okay, but the wicked shall be cut off from the earth and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. And it's like when that scripture says, the sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. Okay, because they are going to be rooted out of the land of the living and they are going to be going, you know, in this uh, paths unto the dead. Sad, scary stuff, man. Okay, so let's go on here. There's a little bit more. Uh, we're almost to the end. Proverbs 5, 7 through 13. Concerning this woman, hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove your way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. Lest you give your honor unto others, and your years unto the cruel. Lest strangers be filled with your wealth. And your labors be in the house of a stranger, and you mourn at the last when your flesh and your body are consumed. And say, How have I hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof? And I have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear unto them that instructed me. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Okay, this, wait, okay. 
sorry, this actually goes down here. The reason why I put this scripture in here, I hope this works and I don't mess this all up. Oh, good. Kind of worked. The reason why I put the scripture in here is because when it says here, this is definitely talking about her, you know, that harlot woman, and her and her house. They mourn at the last when their flesh and body are consumed. Now look at this. In Revelations 2, 22 through 23, the Lord says, I gave her space to repent. This is concerning Jezebel. She was a harlot. Okay, I gave her space to repent of her fornication. She repented not. So behold, okay, pay attention here. I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. Okay, except they repent of their deeds and I will kill her children with death. There's those four sore judgments. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and the hearts and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. So here we go again. God, he loves judgment. He cannot go outside of his word. You know, he must be faithful to his word. So if, if you're walking, if you're committing adultery with this harlot, you're going to end up mourning at the end. You're going to fall into great tribulation. Your flesh and your body is going to be consumed. Okay, we don't want to be there. We want to be like, like this right here. This is the greatest thing you can hear. Depart not from the words of my mouth, saith the Lord. No matter what it costs you. No matter what it costs you, do not depart from the words of his mouth. Because in walking and speaking according to his word is safety. Okay, even if even if it, it lands you a martyr, it doesn't matter because your flesh is dead anyway. You want to, you know, keep in the safety of God's word. Anyways, this, this is just like, you know, serious stuff here. The Lord has warned us, you know, he's, he's really warned us of these things. I mean, the promises are full in his word everywhere you read. Um, but I want to end with this scripture right here. Leave you with this. Psalm 37, 18 through 19. Um, the Lord knows the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever. Okay, the upright. Sorry, I, I have this whole color coordination thing going on and I just have to make it there. <laughs> okay, their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. What is the evil time? That time... I mean, you can have an evil time in life anytime, but to me, this is speaking, when it says in the evil time and in the days of famine, this is these days, the days of great tribulation, okay? Because days of famine, you know, the days of famine was in that, that time of that guy, death, and hell following after him, those four sore judgments that come, you know, at the end of days, the war, the beasts, you know, the pestilence. So in the evil time and in the days of famine, God's people, the upright, they will not be ashamed and they will be satisfied. You know, like the word says, God's seed has never seen begging bread. He provides for us. If we seek first his kingdom and righteousness, everything we need is provided us. We do not have to fear anything, nothing except the Lord himself. Like uh, Noah, Job, and Daniel, they feared the Lord. Okay. But anyways, the other thing I want to point out real quick before I close this down, the Lord knows. Okay, he knows the days of the upright. So if we just happen to be called to martyrdom, you know, he knows. It's not like it's something going on you don't know about. So in that case, we can have peace. Okay, and all these other things though, you know, the pestilence, the beast, the, the war, the sword, famine. Okay, and those things stand because God will deliver you if you are one of his saints walking uprightly faithful and loving him he he can't go contrary to his word he promised but we must have faith because those that come to god first they have to believe that he is and he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him we have to have faith that he keeps his word you know because he moves by faith without faith we cannot please him Anyway, I hope that something in here has really spoke to you, you know, and, and given you an encouragement in these last days, you know, to, to seek the Lord hard and to walk in righteousness no matter the cost. And also know that God can and will and is faithful to deliver us, you know, from all things. He delivers us out of all of our troubles. Amen.